Hello everybody, welcome back to the Spoked Wheel YouTube channel. We are back today with episode 15 of the Andy Schleck Pro Cyclist career. I believe it's also my 30th video, so a couple nice little um, landmarks there, I guess. And after doing the National Championships of Luxembourg last video, we're back into the normal racing for Leopard Pro Cycling. Um, Today we're going to have the Tour de Serbia. Um, so it's a three stage stage race. All three of the stages are pretty flat. This one is classified as hilly, probably for that little climb in the first portion of the race, but the second two stages are definitely flat. So probably not going to be the most exciting GC race probably will come down to sprint finishes and bonus seconds which is not necessarily our strong suit but we're still going to try and go ahead and get through it we'll see what the team expects of us in this race um but hopefully it's not too too lofty um and hopefully we're able to achieve whatever goals they have for us so we're into the first stage in serbia here our team has us as the leader and wants us to try and win the stage but that's just not going to happen looking at the profile um it's going to be a sprint finish i'm pretty sure so i think that perhaps our best opportunity to get something out of this race would be to go for the kom jersey um there is a cat one climb that if we can get maximum points over it should set us up pretty nicely for the rest of the race given that stages two and three are pretty flat although at the moment the other teams are not letting me go in the breakaway probably because i've been designated as a leader um so that's a little unfortunate we're gonna see if anyone else wants to make a move and if they do we can try and respond to it yeah let's follow this from yt pang uh, we also have a rider from Belgium coming with us. Uh, so it looks like we are getting a little bit of a gap this time. Although the teams are still chasing it down pretty aggressively. But honestly, I don't even really think I need to go in the breakaway. But if I could just get maximum points over this Cat 1 climb to get 16 points, that would set me up really nicely. So I want to at least prevent a breakaway from occurring uh before the top of that climb but yeah we've been caught again i'm just gonna try and basically stay at the front and hopefully put myself in a position where i can get maximum points over this category one climb we're two and a half kilometers from the summit now i think we're still in a pretty decent position to go for the the 16 points the race has kind of split up and come back together a few different times here but as we go past the one kilometer to the summit barrier banner i mean i'm gonna attack and try and get a gap to take the points look like looks like that's gonna work we'll put it back on effort cursor come across the line and take 16 points uh so we're provisionally leading the kom classification i'm gonna knock my effort back because i don't actually want to go on a solo break for 80 kilometers or something but We'll go back to the peloton and, if possible, try and pick up more points as the race progresses, but if a breakaway goes off the front, that might be our, our one shot at getting points for the day. So, it's a good thing we succeeded. We've got two and a half kilometers to go again to the next KOM point. Uh, this time it's a Category 2, so 10 points on offer. We're riding a pretty hard effort right now 85 on the effort cursor and it looks like no one's going with us so we can even knock this down to 70 or so and just cruise in although now they're coming after me so i'm gonna attack here on these steeper gradients and then look behind no one's really chasing so we'll stick it back to effort cursor come across the line here and take 10 more points for the KOM classification. We have again reached a, another KOM point. We're inside of a kilometer this time. Doesn't really look like anyone's attacking for it, so we shouldn't really be challenged here as we go and pick up a few more points. I think it is six more points for a category three. 
Um, so we're up to 32 points now, uh, which is very solid. We've gotten the most points on every climb so far. We're going inside of 10 kilometers to go now on stage one here in Serbia. We've got one final climb left on the course that we're going to try and attack on it. Um, at a bare minimum, I hope we'll get the KOM points, but you never know. Maybe we'd get a gap and be able to stay away because that is what our team was hoping for us today. They wanted us to win the stage. So here we go. We're attacking on the steepest part of the climb. We have one rider who's gone with us, Figueroa, and I believe he's taken um yeah he's second in the kom classification so he's been up there on all the climbs uh we're heading inside of five kilometers to go now we do have a decent gap but that's probably not enough to stay away i would guess um but i'm gonna keep relo relaying looks like figueredo is gonna do the same thing although now he's kind of attacking me uh, but we're still away in a group of two here inside of two kilometers to go. So he's opening things up into the sprint. Let's try and sprint against him for the stage win. Uh, the riders are coming from behind, but it looks like we're going to take the victory with Andy Schleck. Our team has us as the leader and wants us to try and win the stage, but that's just not going to happen. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? There was a well-timed bend there right into the line that I think sort of gave us a little extra gap. Um, so that stage actually went way better than I could have even imagined. I didn't think we really had any chance of winning it, but we were able to use that final climb of the day to give ourselves a little gap and we capitalized on it. So that was very successful. Let's take a look at the podium now because we are on it as the stage winner. Uh, we are also going to be on it as the leader of the general classification. Four seconds ahead of Frederico Figueredo, who finished second on the stage. And Paterski, the Polish rider, uh, rounds out the provisional podium. Uh, I believe he finished third on the stage. Uh, he was the fastest finisher out of the group behind us. We're also top of the best climber classification that was our main target at the start of the day but all of a sudden now that we're first on gc it's kind of turned into a secondary thing we should also be first on the points classification and we'll be first in the young rider classification too so a clean sweep on the podium for andy schleck after stage one the only question is do we lead the team classification no we don't uh so we're seventh in that but Leading all the individual classifications is a pretty strong start to this race. We're into stage two now in Serbia, and we're decked out in our nice yellow leader's jersey. Um, today, I think, is going to be a much less relax or a much more relaxing day than stage one. We don't really have anything to do besides sit in the peloton and try and defend our first place on GC. So we don't really need to go out and hunt KOM points because we're pretty securely in first in that competition. And really the only thing we need to worry about is bonus seconds for the riders who are closely positioned around us in the standings. So as long as we keep an eye on that, I think we should be able to successfully defend our first place on GC. We're heading into the final five kilometers of stage two now. My teammates did a great job of bringing back the breakaway and keeping things in check. The sprinters teams are now doing their leadouts. I'm trying to follow the wheel of Jensen Plow right here because I believe he's one of the, the quicker sprinters in this race. Uh, but a couple other leadouts are going as well at this point. Um, it's not really too important to get a decent position in this stage. I just want to hopefully prevent... Uh, anyone who can pass me in the GC from winning it, basically. Um, so it's going to be Inolowski who wins it. For a second there, I thought I was going to come around the turn and take it, but I ran out of energy. Uh, but it is a very nice fourth-place finish for Andy Schleck on the day. Um, now we just have to look at the results, and hopefully we will still be first on the general classification. So we are still first on GC. Stanislaw Inolowski has 
made it onto the same exact time as us. Um, so looks like there's going to be at least a decent chance that if he wins the next stage, uh, he will win this race overall. But I think we should still get on the podium one way or another. So uh, could be worse, but maybe in the next stage, if there's some sprint points available early on with bonus seconds, we'll try and pick those up to give ourselves a little bit of a buffer to prevent ourselves from being overtaken on the general classification. We've arrived on the start line for the final stage of this tour to Serbia. Um, there's a little bit more climbing on the menu for today with that big category two climb. Looks like a breakaway has gone already. Uh, so they'll probably uh, take all of the bonus seconds available at this sprint point, but we'll see. We're gonna stay up near the front of the peloton, uh, stay on guard to see if there's gonna be any opportunities to try and uh, grab a few bonus seconds at some point in the race. There's also another sprint point there just before the final climb of the day. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to get a little bit, little bit of time uh, at one of those sprint points before we get to the finish. But even if we're not, I think our plan will just uh, be to basically follow the wheel of Anilowski in the sprint and hopefully try and match him if we can but we will see we're sort of hitting the base of the climb now inside of two kilometers to go to the sprint point and it actually sort of looks like we're going to be in with a chance of taking bonus seconds here if these guys are out of energy so we're sprinting for it we're going to get at least one bonus second um yeah and that's going to be it so we picked up one bonus second that may end up being uh the difference maker you never know we might win the overall because of that one bonus second so i think it will end up being worth the effort but we're just going to keep looking for opportunities like that and we'll see what happens in the end we're approaching the final sprint point of the day once again there's a bonus second on offer as there's only two riders up the road we're on the wheel of plow right uh he is just better than us in the sprint so Unfortunately, we're going to finish fourth in that one and not take any bonus seconds or sprint points as a result. So we did get the one bonus second in the bag from the first sprint point, but now it's basically just going to come down to the finish and we'll see how Andy Schleck does and we'll see how Anilowski does as well. We're inside of eight and a half kilometers to go now. We're gearing up for the final sprint, just keeping an eye out for Anilkowski, who is right here. Uh, we're gonna try and follow his wheel once he comes up beside us. We've also got Peter here, who's sent seventh in the GC, so shout out to him as well. He's a danger man. Uh, but let's get on the wheel of Anilkowski here. Um, the bonus seconds go to the top three finishers, so Basically, if he finishes in the top three on the stage and we don't, he's going to win the GC and we're going to miss out. Um, so, all really going to come down to this. I think we basically just have to hope that the other sprinters get the better of him because our sprint is probably not good enough to, uh, to beat him. But we'll see. You never know. Uh, we're heading into the final kilometer now. Let's open up the sprint and we'll see what happens. Looks like Enzo Wouters is going to take the win. Plowright second and Anilkowski third. So mathematically, that should mean that Anilkowski will win the overall of this race. We got one bonus second at the sprint point. He should get four bonus seconds for finishing third. So that should mean that he will win the race by three seconds ahead of us. Although... Wouters or Plowright could actually move up as well. I'm not really sure where they're positioned in the GC right now. There we go. So Stanislaw Anilowski, Anilkowski, I'm probably saying that name very incorrectly, but he's going to win the Tour de Serbia um, by three seconds, like we thought, ahead of Andy Schleck. Enzo Wouters is in third, four seconds back. So that one second that we picked up at the sprint point uh, gave us a one second advantage over Enzo Wouters. Um, so we might not have finished second if we didn't get that. So I think that was definitely worth, worth it in the end. Um, 
yeah, a little disappointing to miss out on the win in the last stage, but we also finished third on the sprint classification, so that is a decent result there. We won the KOM classification thanks to mostly our performance in that first stage where we picked up lots of points. We got second in the Young Rider classification, and our team finished 18th <laughs> in the team classification. So that's not too good, 18th out of 18. But we did pretty well in the individual classifications for a race that really wasn't suited to our skill set. It's a pretty decent result, I think, to get second on GC and to win the mountain classification. So we've completed the racing for the video. Uh, we're now into the month of July, so basically halfway through our first season at this point. And we've got some contract negotiations to take care of. So our interest has evolved a lot uh, because of some of the results we've gotten recently. Leopard Pro Cycling is the most interested, given that we are currently riding for them. Kamata Extra Cycling Team is the second most interested. That's the team that we've been putting points into um, on the hopes that they might get promoted into the Pro Continental ranks. So we're going to do that again this month. We're going to put three, all three of our points into that Spanish team and hopefully uh, they will get promoted and also, if they do get promoted, offer us a contract. Um, and also, the fact that it's a Spanish team is probably our best bet for riding a Grand Tour next season because La Vuelta a España is the third and final Grand Tour, so it would give us more time to level up and reach the level that we need to be at to enter a Grand Tour before it takes place. So it, I think this team is a good option, assuming that they actually do get promoted which we can impact if we continue to pick up points as the season rolls along. But yeah, that's going to be it for the video today. So we've got two races coming up in July. First one is a one day race in Guatemala. And then we have a stage race in Bulgaria that actually takes us into August, I believe with one final stage there. And then after that, we get into a period with a lot of climbing the Tour de l'Avenir, and then a couple of one-day races as well. So this period right here, sort of three, two weeks, two to three weeks of the season right here is going to be very exciting, I think. So I'm looking forward to getting into that. But before we get there, we do have to knock out these two races here. So thanks to everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will be back soon with the next installment as we continue to progress through the season. Um, so thanks again. I'll see you next time.